Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting held this April 20th. It is now 6.05 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Uh, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Middle School offices here at 8 Conway Street with remote participation details as follows. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799. Toll-free is 833-548-0276. The meeting code is 911-604-1580. Passcode is 570012. For those of you who are Zooming, uh, want to join on Zoom, please go to the Town of Deerfield website and click on the uh, select board meeting and the Zoom link will be there. So I now call this meeting to order. All right, we'll start the meeting with, uh, do we have any public comment? Okay. I don't see anybody. Hey. Okay. So, um, do we want to wait until six fifteen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No too bad. We have a couple of votes to change. Okay. I didn't see an outreach coordinator position. Was that left over or was no, that, that from last time? Sure, I guess. <laughs> um, I was wondering about that. Um, and then their contracts to sign? Uh, yeah, you need to vote the two contracts and sign oh, they're here. They are in the signature folder as well as the archive book copy of the one. That you need to sign as well. Well, those are just a chair signature. Yes. Well, all of these are? are? Oh, just these two. This one. Okay. This one. For all yeah. of us. The archive. Yeah. Okay. She said the job description for the outreach coordinator is here? No, she's printing it now. Oh, okay. Yep. So just chair signs those. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the town administrators. Um, contract between the town of Deerfield and uh, Casey Warren, which will take effect, um, well, entered into this day, the 20th of April, 2022. It's a three-year contract. Hmm. I'll second that motion. Are you here any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, congratulations, Casey. Thank you, Casey. You're stuck with us. We've got you in shackles for another three years. <laughs> um, well, and then uh, I'll also make a motion to approve the employment agreement between the town of Deerfield and town accountant Brenda Hill, also entered in the 20th day of April, uh, 2022. I'll second that motion. Any further discussions? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. We have been shattered carried. for three years, too. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So, Great. by Travel signing signs. these contracts, we've basically and hopefully ensured that we'll have two very, very capable people helping us run this town. Mm -hmm. They're amazing, uh, amazing help. As bean counters go, Brenda is probably <laughs> one of the best I've encountered. Uh, she handles yes. the town budget quite well um, and um, 
Casey uh, has done a tremendous job for us since we brought her on board. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that she brought COVID with her, but you know, we yep. can't hold it. We can't really hold that against her. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> but, Coincidence? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and, you know, while I'm mentioning it, uh, we have Julie Shuffin that's here in the audience today. Uh, she'll yes. be going over some things. Um, I've really got to commend her on the job that she's done with the Finance Committee. I can't um, think of a better it is, chair um, in all the years. We made everything very clear and concise and, you know, no guessing on where we are and, you know, um, as, as leaders, you know, of the town that we are, uh, it's, we can only do so much, and it's the support that we have around us that really makes us look good sometimes. <laughs> and God only knows I need a lot. <laughs> so um, thank you very much to the three of you that are here. So yeah, for sure. Appreciate everything that you do. So, so I will make a motion to sign the warrant for the archive. I'll second that. Great. This is the official signature that will go into the permanent town record for the uh, the, the town warrant. So I sign that so, when she gets back. So, okay. Okay. So the outreach outreach coordinator. So this is the, um, we have hired um, Chris, and I'm drawing a blank on his last name at the moment. I'd say it's Gerard or something, but it's not that. Um, but Jennifer um, Remillard has, uh, our senior center director, had hired on uh, Chris recently to fulfill the duties of outreach coordinator to try and get out to people who can't get to the senior center and um, try to provide those services. So this um, this job description really just, um, drives home the work that work that is expected and that the person does. Um, I think I've gone over this before, but I, I feel pretty good about this. I don't have any other questions. Do you want to add anything to this, Senior Center Director? So Outreach what they coordinator? do you want me to just tell you what you, what we added? Yeah, that'd be um, helpful. Sorry, I saw I the I saw the highlighted. You guys didn't have a piece of paper. Must uh, be able to pass the Corey and have a valid yes. driver's license. And yep. the other thing that was added was this um, bullet on the first page, the last bullet from the bottom, maintains the highest level of confidentiality. Right. Because both important. the outreach coordinator and the program coordinator are privy to private information. Mm -hmm. And so the director wanted to make a reference to holding that um, as a high essential okay. duty. Okay, makes um, sense. The other thing was, and I highlighted it, um, and that's just the Corey check and the driver's license. The driver's license was there. Yep. The Corey check was not. Yeah, that's a, so we that's added a must. That. Yep. Great. And so those are the changes. They were actually fairly routine changes, yep. I think. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the outreach coordinator job description for the South County Senior Center. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, uh, well, it is now 6.15. Um, Great. Brenda and Julie, you want to come up? I can go over the thing, too. I just got yep. to... You guys can come chat, and I'll get all of my stuff ready. <laughs> are, you sharing the, are you sharing it on screen? or? I just need to get myself into the meeting. So okay. Just... Yep. Uh, we do have uh, Justin Skelly from DPC here too Hi, on the on the items that have to do with the the ask for three million and kind of where we're at on the plant. We've been talking a bit today. If I can give some updates on where we're at and what we're doing, so and where we hope to go. Well, uh, get him out so if we can too. So people start reading the warrant, they'll see that almost everything on here is a lot has to do with the budget yep. and what we have to do with the town. Uh, this is probably been one of the more challenging 
years that we've had to get a budget together <laughs> mm -hmm. because there's so many moving parts. And I uh, commend the, uh, the finance committee. Uh, we've been holding joint meetings for several weeks, uh, which really helps. But <laughs> um, I can remember when I first started on the select board, we were all in silos. And sometimes there was some spirited conversations when the groups got together yeah. because there wasn't the communication between the two, but uh, everything's a lot more open now and we have discussion um, and we don't always agree on everything. But the nice thing about it is we always talk about it. Yeah. And it's just, that's the most important thing is the communication, open communication and sensible communication. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we set our pride aside and we look at what's the best for the town of Deerfield. And I think uh, the combined groups that work together, I think that's what you're going to see in this war. Yeah, so. but certainly the capital improvement planning committee did a great job this year in trying to prioritize the projects with not any money really in the beginning we really weren't sure what we'd be able to do but they worked really hard to kind of prioritize if we do have money what we wanted to do and the finance committee has been amazing to work with this year and try to get get all this together and i can't thank brenda enough and casey enough for and julie and julie yes i can't thank julie <laughs> <laughs> it's been very helpful so. so julie do you want to go over some of the financial things that we talked about we last do that night first. or do you I, want me to start the presentation i didn't know i didn't put that that outlook that fiscal outlook that you gave to me into the info session let's try this um, i see that yep. yes all right so i sort of took that budget overview thing document and put it into powerpoint just to make a couple points about okay. it um so the budget first point is that it is a balanced budget and it does meet prop two and a half requirements which is sort of the the minimum baseline that we should try to meet um, almost all the municipal budget lines provide level services that means the price may have gone up but it's due to inflation or increases in prices from service providers or a coal and step increases to salaries there are some budget line items that increase services there's more hours, a couple new positions, some new contracted positions. Those are called out individually in that budget overview document when we get to that. Um, there's a few significant cost increases that are not a result of increased services, um, but they're things like pandemic impacts or the number of kids in which school or loss of a grant or something like that. And those mm -hmm. also are called out individually in that document. Um, there were some reductions. They put in street lights, were replaced with LED lights, so the electricity charges went down. There were a couple other. There was a uh, completion of the open space plan, so the amount of money set aside for that went away. Um, and then there's some budget fluctuations just that just happen because we have scheduled events. There's more elections this year, right. or it's the year we do the audit, or whatever, um, and those cause increases as well. As you said, finance committee, select board, everybody went through the budget together, sort of ad nauseum. Um, we got through the end of it and there are two um, main comments that the finance committee had concerns that we have about this budget. So it, as I said, it's a balanced budget. Every line item has been reviewed. Every line item is appropriate expense. Um, and they're all reasonably justified, but there are two big concerns. One is that there have been quite a few fairly large increases to personnel costs and personnel costs tend to increase at a rate greater than two and a half percent per year. So if we're going to continue to meet prop two and a half override and prop two and a half um, constraints, it becomes more challenging the higher percentage of your budget is in personnel. So that's one concern about this budget. The other concern, um, and it's going to sound a little odd as a concern, but we had one-time federal grant funds, ARPA funding, that the select board decided to use for some major projects and some capital expenditures, which is fantastic and lovely to have, you know, federal grant funding coming into the town and be able to use it for those projects. So there's no concern at all about the use of those funds. The concern is that 
since we're using ARPA funding or federal grant funding for many of our capital projects that next year when we go to look at the balance between our routine operating expenditures and what we have available to spend on capital, we won't, we, we may not have as much available for capital as we would want to. Right. So there's, th those are two aspects of the budget that the finance committee found concerning. Yep, very valid. Um, so there's that. We have also provided a breakdown of where does the money come from? There are three main sources of funding. There's property taxes, there are state funds, and there's local receipts, which are things like fees and I don't know what else goes in local receipts, but that kind of thing. Permit, um, permits, fees. Yep. Permits, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have something that we call free cash, which is pretty much just excess funds that weren't used last year that are available this year. We tend to use that free cash primarily for capital expenditures. So you can see the breakdown here of the percentages of these different categories of funding that are used, or at least you can see it if the sun's not shining. <laughs> it's almost setting. So, and then we also have a breakdown of the expenses. Um, and we provided, I don't think, no, I didn't put both of them in here. Um, so the omnibus is sort of the way it's constructed is divided into these different categories, general government, public safety, et cetera. Um, and you can see the percentage of our expenses that go into each of these categories. Um, that omnibus budget, in addition to the omnibus budget, we have some warrant articles that we, that are outside the omnibus budget. Um, but if we look at those, we can put those into the same categories as well. So if we have a capital expenditure that is, I don't know what, unfortunately, school. police cruiser is coming to mind, which right. is in the but omnibus budget, but whatever, you know, a, a school, a new refrigerator for the school right. that, you know, we can categorize that as an education expense. So we took all those, those warrant articles, those extra items, put those into the same categories. And that's what this breakdown is that I'm showing you. Here. Oh, good. Um, and that is all I had in slides. We have those individual items, but unless people have specific questions, do you want to go through those? Or? I can go through the, the info session stuff, which goes article for article, if you'd okay. like. Okay. We'll do the best we can. Okay. So please come to the annual town meeting. Please come to the annual town meeting <laughs> next Monday night at 7 p.m. at Frontier Regional Schools Auditorium. So this is intended to outline the general articles we should will be discussing. So the first article is a consent article. And the purpose is to approve through a single vote several items. It's reports to officers, the elected official compensation, acknowledgement of gifts from our private nonprofit partners, such as Deerfield Academy, Eagle Brook, Historic Deerfield, Vermont School. And we've listed those gifts that were both in kind and monetary for everyone to review. And then we have to vote the library interest allocation. And that's a split between the Tilton Library and the Frontier Regional School for library use. And the total was $2,709 split 85% to Tilton Library at $2,303 and 15% for Frontier Regional Library use at $406. And then we have a couple other boilerplate items within this consent article and that's the acceptance of grants, which is an authorization for the select board to accept and spend on behalf of the town the select board contracting authority for a five-year period, as well as the assessor's contracting authority for also a five-year period. Our second consent article is special appropriations. And these are routine appropriations the town votes every year. We would hope that the town would vote this through a single vote, but if not, we can make an accommodation for that at town meeting on the floor. So the first item under this consent article is the reserve fund appropriation for $100,000. That was a discussion amongst the finance committee and select board. This is a routine amount. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you want to add to that, Judy? 
We talked about changing it a little bit. Me Carolyn too. was thinking of adding to it. I think everybody consensus was we all felt like 100 was probably a good number right now. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it need to increase later, but right now it's good. <laughs> and then the OPEB liability trust fund appropriation. This is for other post-employment benefits. And it would be the amount that we would put away this year toward into the trust. And that amount is $39,760 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, which is FY23. And it's created, this is the investment of funds for anticipated future costs for post-employment benefits for staff. The third item in this special appropriation article is out of district placement. And that's for vocational education outside of the district. So outside of Franklin County. Generally, it's a Smith vocational school. Mm -hmm. And out of district placement, the cost is 64,500 in our estimate. And the final piece of this is $10,000 for the 350th celebration to appropriate for their 350th activities. Planning's already begun for this and they've actually started notifying people that there's fun things coming up. We need people to join. Yes. Get involved. Yep. So article three is revolving funds. And this is another boilerplate article that's voted every year. And the town votes to approve the maximum amount to be spent through established revolving funds. So the three that we'd be discussing is the recycling fund of $20,000, parks and recreation of up to $75,000 and planning of up to $25,000. Article four, this is a new article. So that we're creating a revolving fund for foster care and transportation. That's the request to town meeting. So this would be used if created by the school committee to pay for transportation for foster children to and from their school of origin. And so when you create a new revolving fund, you have to identify the fund name, the authority, the revenue source, the use of the funds and the spending. So this would be foster care transportation under the authority of the school community with receipts related to foster care transportation. So receipts coming from the school of origin to pay for that transportation right. by a company that provides it. And so that would be the use of the funds. And the spending limit, there was discussion about what the spending limit could be because transportation can get very expensive. Yep. The decision was made to create a spending limit, limit of up to $200,000. And the money has to come to us before we spend it. So it's not like we just go and spend the money and then hope we get paid. Well, we, and, and so the whole point is to have the ability to use this fund yep. um, for purposes of making sure that students get back and forth to their schools. Yep. And so Article 5 dovetails into that conversation because this is a request to town meeting to authorize the school committee to enter into agreements with the Executive Office of Health and Human Services and other agencies under the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is affectionately called ESSA. And this would allow for those transportation services, this agreement. Yep. Um, and so the article has a little bit more information in it, but essentially it explains that there's a funding <clears throat> logic that's been created by DESE, EOHHS, and the purpose is to make sure that foster students in, this, in our area in Deerfield have the ability to get to their school of origin if that's what's deemed necessary. Mm -hmm. So I want to point out that this is not a new expense for the town. This is just a this an is for account to use. put the money in and take it out of. That's it correct. It's not a new expense. That's right. It's nothing, no, not a new program. Yep, that's it's a good not point. a new program. That is a good point. Thank you, Julie. Um, we currently don't have a student that requires this, but the superintendent's office asked all four towns to consider adding it to their warrants in, in anticipation case. of having a place for this money to land if, if we did have a situation where we needed to provide that type of transportation. Yep. And not every town was able to get it on their warrant, just so everybody knows. Okay. So Article 6 is approval of the classification compensation plan. And this is, this would be adoption of a new plan that includes seven grades and 12 steps. And this is the final transition plan based on the study that was completed in 2021. Um, you have 
a couple of items I want to draw people's attention to. We've created an operator in training position in hopes of hiring individuals to train and certify to meet our safety standards and health standards with the wastewater treatment plants. We've had some difficulties hiring, which is impacting budgets in other areas, but it's really become an issue because we do have to comply with the permitting requirements from DEP and EPA. And so we need to have people in those positions that can meet at least the public safety needs and be trained up to, to do other functions. And the other question here, and you'll see an itemization against a certain title, the town clerk treasurer collector. So the select board's asking town meeting to approve a split of the combined position. It's further into the warrant into two separate positions. So you'll see there is a town clerk and there is a separate treasurer collector, but the current combined position of three, of, of three titles has to exist until town meeting and the legislature act on these, the request to split those positions out. So that's why you have that little, it's not an asterisk, it's another symbol. Yep, I also wanted to just mention that the, um, compensation plan that we're, we're asking town meeting to approve is, is the second year of a two-year kind of transition plan, all the work Casey and uh, the consultants did to kind of figure out where we were, do the study, adjust people's pay last year, and this is kind of dropping everybody into this new plan this year. So it's been a two-year process and done a very good job at it. So thank, thank you. you. Article seven is snow and ice shortfall. And this is expenses that were incurred for snow and ice removal this past 2021-2022 season. And the amount of that request of a transfer from free cash is $57,842. Not a lot of snow, but a lot of pesky little storms. A lot of pesky storms. <laughs> a lot of ice. <laughs> so yeah. Article 8 is the omnibus budget. Do you want to talk about this or do you want me to? Go ahead. <laughs> I love how she just throws that out there. Here's the bus, Casey. So, so the omnibus budget consists of nine series, they call them series, where certain items of governmental service are identified. So 100 series is general government, and that includes salaries and expenses for areas such as the select board office, the moderator, it's the accountant's salary. It's also the assessor section, their salaries and expenses, the clerk treasurer collector salaries and expenses. And in this case, there's, a, there's information about um, our legal expenses, personnel board, um, contracted services and other committees like Conservation Commission, Open Space, Planning, Zoning, Energy, plus our town office building maintenance and town office expenses and general insurance. And the total recommendation for general government was $1,316,955. The 200 series is public safety and that includes police and inspections, emergency management and canine control expenses. And the total public safety recommended budget amount was $1,361,195. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes it sounds funny. Um, the 300 series is education. And we had a couple significant rises here. Mm -hmm. The total recommended budget is $9,840,043. And that represents the largest increase is represented from Franklin Tech, which went up $218,000, I believe, roughly. So the, uh, I'd just like to make a point on that. Um, I know it's a significant increase, but it actually really makes me happy I to see the number of students wanting to get into the trades. Um, it, you know, I've been in, the business field for a number of years and just trying to get people that have trades has mm -hmm. been very difficult. And seeing this increase is, to me, is showing a little bit more of a positive turn um, mm -hmm. because not everybody should be going to college. Right. 
you, can do um, real well. you know, somebody that can work with their hands. And if you look at the population of Deerfield, you look at the plumbers, the carpenters and stuff, they're the ones that are doing quite well in town, you know. Yeah, if you have a business like that, you do well. Yeah. Trades, trades are great. I graduated yeah. from Franklin Tech. It's a great program. So, so it's an encourage. And Franklin Tech does an excellent job. Uh, they put the new students through different skills, like plumbing, carpentry, electrical, and seeing what their fortes are. And it's, it's they do quite well. So. You also, um, another comment on that same line is that the Franklin Tech budget only increased something like 1% or something. Right. This major increase is because we have so many more kids going. Correct. That's correct. Um, yep. So it's, it's, it's not that they're outrageously Out of control increasing their budget. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. True. We went from 18 students to 29. Yeah. It's a huge increase for one year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. yes. So the next series is the 400 series and that's public works. It encompasses highway, winter and ice, snow, winter snow and ice removal, street lights, transfer station, and monitoring related to the landfill. That's the recommended amount is $1,229,894. The next series is human services. It's the 500 series. And this includes Board of Health, Veterans Services, the ADA coordinator, and senior expenses. And the recommended 2023 amount was $212,345. We do have, I'll speak to this a little bit because uh, Board of Health, right? So we do have quite a bit of increase here over previous years. And really what it has to, I, a lot of the, I guess the discussion with the public would be that there's, um, there's been a big change in how we're addressing that. There's been a lot of um, uh, Carolyn, Dick, a lot of people have been doing work for a lot of years and not getting paid for it. So on a weekend, somebody will call and they need a, a food truck inspected or so something happens at a, at a septic, they've got to go and do that. A lot of times, Carolyn would go and do that. We really had to had to really look at hiring and we have hired a full-time um, almost full-time uh, health inspector to do a lot more of this work and health agent. So um, with Dick uh, semi-retiring and, and doing less of the work, we pulled on uh, Alex White, who's been doing a, a fantastic job. We've also, during this, revised all of our fees um, and really are looking at a lot more um, fee increases we're hoping for in town and planning for because of you know, activities like Treehouse coming to town that'll have a row of food trucks every, you know, I think every weekend this year. And so there's a lot more inspections that'll be happening. There's been a huge uptick in, you know, with, with uh, building and all with septic, um, septic inspections and Title Fives. And so there's just a lot of work that is needed to get done. And we needed, and, and the, also the amount that you need to pay for health health agents right now it has gone really through the roof because there's not many of them left um not many new ones coming into the market many retiring so the like every other position the wages have, have gone up quite a bit so um it is a it is a fairly large increase but we do feel like um it should be captured with fees and and we are really paying people for doing the work that sometimes we were getting for free a little earlier so that's what I got to say. Thank you very much about that. Yep. Adding those details. The next series is culture and recreation, and that is the 600 series. It's generally where you find your library, your beach expense, historical commission, Veterans Day Memorial expense. And in this case, the recommended amount was $292,855. And some, some of this increase really was the, the Tritown Beach coming back yes. under you know, it, it's been closed for, for due to COVID and then just not really having staff and everything. So um, they're really hoping to get um, that place up and running again. So there is some expense there um, that has increased that we hadn't had in the last few years. And then the next one is the 700 series and that's debt service. And this encompasses our payments, interest on maturing debt, interest on temporary loans and payments directly to maturing. And that's $659,260 as the recommended amount. 
Um, the 800 and 900 series, it's intergovernmental payments and benefits. And so you have the COG core assessment, you have workers' comp and unemployment, group health insurance, school health insurance for the, I'm sorry, group health insurance for the town and for the school, Medicare, and our retirement payments. And this recommended amount is $1,796,283. This brings our total omnibus budget to $16,708,000. Seven hundred eight. I can't say that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just can't get thousand. my 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 mouth to wrap it. itself around that. Sixteen million seven hundred eight. Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen million seven hundred eight thousand nine hundred thirty dollars. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just is such a hard number for my brain to wrap itself around. And so you'll see there's some highlighted information. I'm gonna. I'll make some yep, changes yeah. to the final talking good. point. Mm -hmm. good. Article nine is collective bargaining agreement. And this was discussed a couple times in the last couple of weeks. The town has reached a tentative agreement with the police union. However, the highway union has not settled. So our final motion, depending on what happens, our final motion should include the police union, but we're not sure about the um, UPSEU, which is the highway employees. Article 10 is the sewer wastewater treatment plant enterprise fund. And that's the operational enterprise fund to run the plants. The request is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or otherwise provide the operational funds for the sewer operations for fiscal 2023. So, so how do you want me to go through this one? I'd like to go through it for a second, can I? Okay, sure. All right, go so I'm gonna it. share a screen um, and- Hold on, let me stop. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Thanks. <clears throat> Why is it every time you go to look for something, it's not there? <laughs> you want to share a screen and then all of a sudden it's, it's not there. The window. Yep. Okay. So let me just grab these real quick and they should now come up. Um, back to the meeting. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, that's one. Do I have another screen that I can share? So that would be on the next yeah. next article, Trevor. Probably you want that on Article Eleven. Well, I do. Yeah, but Keep. I want I want the other one here, which I'm trying to get. Okay, there's Great. another yep. table that he has. All right, uh, try that again. Here we go. There we go. Yay! So this is just. Um, so I, I wanted to bring this up a little bit because this is kind of talking about our our sewer rates and also um, you know this is funding our our we talk about sewer rates to fund our running of the wastewater enterprise fund and we have um, we have obviously expenses and um, and revenues that kind of bring up those numbers and um, I want to say um, the main thing I wanted to bring up this chart for was to really talk about where our rates are right now and possibly where they may go in the future on the next article we're going to ask for um, a three million dollar um, appropriation and a and a debt exclusion vote in the following monday during the election um, to, to continue the work but um really was just to talk about a bit about of our um the expenses that we have going on right now and do we have enough in the rates to to cover those and i think we do for this this coming year and we had voted last fall a 16.38 uh, um, per 100,000 uh, per 1000 gallons uh, to cover the the cost of the operations of the plant and the debt service and i think we can uh, stay with that rate we're going to look at the rates in the fall again to decide whether um, you know, it really depends on how the vote goes tomorrow uh, on Monday, and then um, if if we are going to tackle the rest of the plant, and then also, um, do we want to keep the rate the same, or kind of do two steps before we get to a rate of about eighteen sixty? If we were going to tackle on um, tackle that second that second phase at the at the wastewater treatment plant, so I'm going to stop share on that one, and then um, do you want to bring your Yes. Page back up. Mm -hmm. I don't have 18 screens open right now. 
<laughs> so when we talk about the sewer wastewater treatment plant enterprise fund, we always show people the revenues yep. and the expenses. And so user fees are estimated at 1.472 million with retained earnings of 300,000 and investment income of 2,000. That gets us to $1,774,240. Yep. And expenses include wages, operating expenses, debt service, indirect costs, and operational reserve. So salaries and wages have gone up, as we mentioned earlier. It's been difficult and more uh, with higher costs to hire mm -hmm. than we anticipated. I think it was referred to, it was explained to me as the great resignation in the last year and a half, two years. And a lot of it had to do with COVID, but many people just decided that they wanted to walk away from regular full-time work and were yeah, in a place or at an age they could do that. So yep. salaries and wages are estimated at $431,040. Operating expenses are estimated at $648,200. Debt service is estimated at $585,000. Do you want to speak a minute to that or no? Uh, sure, I, I can. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> so the uh, anticipation uh, by the Finance Committee and the Select Board together was... Um, paying down some of the debt this year uh, because next year we'll probably be paying USDA for the 40-year um, uh, loan that they've, or two loans that they're, that they're uh, giving us. So we decided to pay down 400,000 and out of that 400,000, 300,000 of it is paid for by the sewer users. So that's in this budget. And 100,000 is in your omnibus budget, which was on Article 8 that uh, Casey yep. showed you earlier. And then in addition to that, we will be coming down to the wire on completing the first section of the phase one upgrades to the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. And in, in doing that, we have a, we have a, a ban um, a, a one-year loan that we'll be taking out in June that will be paid for in June of 23, just the interest on that. And so there's a calculation of the interest, 75% being um, covered by the wastewater treatment plant operations and 25% in the omnibus budget. Yep, perfect. I also just mentioned that the salaries line, it's about a it's about a hundred thousand more than last year, and it's really because we 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 realized that well, one, it's a, a DEP requirement that we have four operators. You have a chief operator and three operators at the plants to run both plants, um, and we have been running on a skeleton crew of like three for the last several years, and then our chief operator left, and then uh, one of our other operators left. So we have one operator really running both plants at the moment. So we really realized, you know, we knew that we, and, and the, the trouble is trying to hire people. So we did in, in our rate calculations and our expense plan for salaries to add those two operator positions. Um, and then we have just signed a contract with a, a chief operator that we hope will start very soon and then should be full-time by mid-May. So that's kind of covering the labor costs of it. So those are, those are an increase, but our, our rates that we had kind of uh, planned for was was to cover that. We also are getting some assistance from the town of Amherst in True. terms of running the plants with both certified and entry, and, and so that we have some staff support. Yep. But we are going to have to start, and this was a conversation that we had with Amherst because they've already moved into this training model of operator and training. Great. So they were helpful as well as DPC, the engineering company, and, and sort of helping us nail down a, a way to proceed that might give us a little more flexibility. Yeah. So Article 10. Yeah. Article so 10 is to request that the town approve funding of $3 million in debt excluded borrowing as allowed under Prop 2 and a half for the additional phase two upgrades to the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility. Take it away, Trevor. 
And if I could share again, I'll bring that other, um, just make sure I can grab the right file now. I'm gonna close that one. I did put, put both your Adobe documents in here, but I didn't put them in the right place. So I'll oh, fix that's okay. that. Nope. So, um, you know, working with the engineers um, over the last few days, we, we really kind of wanted to kind of put a story out uh, to explain kind of where we had, where we were, what we're doing now and where we'd like to go and what we can and can't do with, with the environment that we're in right now. And I'll, 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 I'll weigh on Justin Skelly here in a moment from DPC. Um, but I'll just try to um, explain this a little bit and then maybe, maybe Justin can weigh in a little bit as well. So what, what you're looking at here is a, um, a, is a chart that kind of has some slim down, um, subheadings of the different projects that we worked on or ent entities of the project that we worked on, you know, headworks, aeration basins, um, you know, clarifiers, disinfectant, all kinds of different items that made up that, that, um, that first phase one and two that we talked about back in 2019, 2018, when we were trying to plan what we're going to do with this plant and how much it would cost. So at that point, we had about a 19 million seven hundred and twenty six thousand five hundred and thirty four dollar budget for these two phases that we were hoping to do at the plant. So um, for some reason, we asked for 19 million and not 19 million seven. But here nor there, that's what we that's what we asked for at the time to get going. And we knew we weren't tackling phase two right away. So um, so that that really wasn't an issue. We had enough money to get started on the project, which was really the what we wanted to do. Um, so it, you'll see um, the pink kind of area here is as awarded. So when when the bids went out, so it takes a few years, you know, uh, uh, some time to do the to do the design work and, and kind of go through the plant and get a little more nitty gritty into what we're actually gonna do and then uh, go out to bid. We went out to bid with kind of a base project. And then we had several alternates that we wanted to kind of keep separate in case bids were high or depending on how, how things shook out in the bidding process. Well, COVID hit and inflation went through the roof. So when we when we awarded this, when we got the two bids back for the project, they were significantly higher than we wanted to do. And then we decided also to pull some things from phase two into phase one, um, like the plant watering system. Uh, when we figured we were building the Headworks program, a Headworks building and all, we really felt uh, the plant watering system was gonna be in the second phase, but we really felt it was important to pull that forward. Um, because of the Headworks uh, program, so um, that part of the project. So this phase one kind of shows you what our bid was. Um, the bid that we we ended up um, approving the base bid and all the alternates. We um, we we're lucky to secure uh, wait, um, Waterline Industries, which is a fantastic contractor who's on our on our project right now. Um, and they, um, th these are the bids that came back and the projects that we, the select board and talking with finance and our working group, um, we felt was important to move forward with. Um, so we did that and that left, you know, roughly $3 million left um, that we could, we could move forward with. In this 16 million, we also went back to USDA and asked for an additional loan so that we had a first loan for I think it was 11 million. And then we asked for an additional loan. Um, they were able to give us some more money, not all of it. They, they couldn't get everything, but they were able to give us an additional loan at, a, at the poverty rate, which was like one and a quarter percent or one and three eighths percent. It's a very good rate. Um, so, they, so really when Brenda talked about two loans, there's the first loan, there's a second loan, and then there's the extra money that we felt we would go out and borrow on our own. There's only so many grants out there. Um, so at the time that we were doing this, we thought it was important to just award these bids and get started on the project since we have the appropriation to move forward. So we um, we did that work. So where are we at right now? So the plant is underway and getting built um, well, and we have the additional 3 million that we need to uh, um, uh, appropriate. And we, we have the ability to do that in a change order because we'd like to hang on to the contractor we have. and. Um, uh, I forget the term for it, but um, 
not appropriation, but uh, procurement law allows you to um, allows you to do a change order for a certain percentage. So we we feel like we could do that and get these second items you'll see in phase one with a with a change order um, to to bring us to that 19 million of appropriation. But it does leave some project um, a portion of the project that we couldn't do because of the bids were were high. Um, which was uh, some more work on the aeration tanks to do that, the, the secondary aeration basins um, and all the electrical and plumbing that goes along with it. It sounds like it's just aeration basins, but there's a lot more that is rolled into that number than just that. Um, so that's what we're going to ask the town for uh, an additional appropriation of three three million dollars to finish the project out. You'll see in the pink column over here, there are still projects, parts of that project that we we don't, we're not going to be able to do with the funding that we're asking for or the funding we were hoping to have, um, but they don't affect permitting. So we would love to have a solid handling, a solids handling um, building and the work to kind of um, thicken the sludge before we get rid of it. But looking at that it doesn't affect permit and the cost for it compared to the difference between a 4% and a 1% um, liquid that you're going to get rid of. The cost just didn't seem worth the squeeze at the moment, kind of appropriate. Um, so to, to uh, <laughs> we just didn't feel like it, it was something we would like to do, but we're worried about cost. We're worried about meeting permit so that the most important things that we are addressing in the blue columns meet the permit and 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 put us going forward there's some other things like changing the windows out in the big you know in the main building and some other repairs on that building that we would have loved to done but um they don't they don't they don't matter when it comes to permit so we can tackle that stuff as years go on and other appropriations if we can get other grant funding but we felt like it was important to hang on to the to the contractor that we have now and um there will be a question is why aren't you going to get a grant for this and and we we struggle with that question we are going to look for grants for this but we're looking for it like to pay for it in arrears because the issue is if we go out and lose the contractor, find a grant, the money that we would get in a grant, we asked for 19 million, or excuse me, 12 million, and we got you know, a $2.6 .2 million grant. So the, the amount that you would get as a grant is not large enough to lose the contractor and the mobilization charge and the bidding, all, all the stuff that goes into getting a bid out and getting a new contractor and their mobilization would cost more than what we would get in a grant. So we're hoping that with all the infrastructure money that is swirling around out there, we've been told, um, we're hoping to get our hands on that. We've been very aggressive working that those channels, but we don't want to lose the contract that we have. We think it's important and more cost effective to get, um, to get this appropriation and finish out what we feel is important to meet permit. And then I'm going to um, turn it over to Justin. The, the one last thing I'll talk about is inflation, and it's been brutal. Um, you know, we look at the cost of what the project was um, back in 2019, and if we were to bid it today, it's about a 34% increase. Um, and if you look at, say, in my, my position, what I do for a living, and since that same time, my my wares that I sell have gone up 48%. So it's it's a it's real um, and, and we're just trying to struggle to kind of do the stuff that's important to us to meet permit and try to save as much money for the town as we can. Can you add anything to that, Justin? Am I, I miss on anything or? I was just thinking to myself when you said you're gonna turn it over to me that, you know, I think you hit the highlights. I think you summarize things probably more succinctly than I was going to. So, you know, you're, you're definitely fully tied into this project and understand it in and out. Um, trying to think if there's anything I can add other than, you know, this will essentially getting through that additional 3 million set up, you know, we always refer to a treatment plant as like the human body. So yep. that's really the heart and the lungs, you know, of your treatment facility. And it's going to set you up to meet permit for the next 20 years, you know, unless something crazy comes out. So this is really just to finish out what we need to do to be in compliance and uh, to have that flexibility with uh, future total nitrogen limits. Thank you. Yep. But that, that's about it, Trevor, unless you had anything. Okay. I think you no, covered it all. That was great. And I think just kind of looking at 
I know another question will be, well, what, what's it, how, how does this affect me? Like, what, what about my rates? And I think for FY23, I don't think we need, we won't need to change the rate right away, but we'll look at that in the fall because it might be smart to kind of raise it. We know it's going to need to be around eight, uh, 18.6 in FY24. So it, it, sometimes it makes sense to kind of raise gradually. And that's what we've tried to do from the beginning of this project to kind of where we are now is to not come out with a, a massive increase right away. Uh, all at once is to try and gradually get there. And that's helped us build up our retained earnings to be able to pay 300,000 down on the debt already. So we're trying to slowly, slowly deal with that. But if you look at the graph of inflation, you know, we usually carry I think we carried about a 4% increase each year um, for, for inflation on this. And that carried it pretty well right across the bottom. You know, it was 5% under, you know, some years it was under. But then you, you get to like Dece December, you know, January here in 20, uh, 2019, and it just, it just climbs. And it's 20% a year for a couple of years now. And I, I'm not sure where it's at right now, but I know that from the gas pump, it's still up there. Um, and we're, we're seeing it in our business too. So um, we're just trying to tackle as much as we can with the funds we have without, without breaking the bank. So, and we still have another plant or we have pipes in the ground. We still have more work to do. So we're trying to be as, as efficient as we can on, on these projects. I think I'll leave it there unless there's any questions at all on from the public or anybody about this. I'll try to get my speech much quicker at town meeting. <laughs> I probably won't say anything. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, Justin, very much for, for backup. Yep, I thank you. That very much. I'll stop sharing. Yes. Okay. Right, cool. So Article 12 is the South County EMS Enterprise Fund. Hi, Zach, I can see you. Um, <laughs> so this is another enterprise fund that identifies both revenues and expenses. And this is a much larger table. So if it looks a little confusing, sometimes it's just how things are spaced. And so we try to balance, we balance our revenues with our expenses and revenues for the service, medical service fees, and retained earnings, the Deerfield assessment, Sunderland assessment, and Waitley assessment, because all three towns contribute to this in different percentages. Um, Deerfield's percentage is 51.76%, Sunderland's percentage is 31.48%, and Waitley's percentage is 16.76%. So the total costs are split out according to those percentages. So total revenues estimated are $1,416,117. And expenses, as many people will remember, must match those revenues. So you'll see salaries and wages, operating expenses, and indirect costs reach that $1,416,117. Of the changes over this fiscal year that we estimate, the town of Deerfield's allocated expense will be $345,693. And that's, that reflects the split with Sunderland's contribution of $210,221 and Waitley's contribution at $111,947. What would you like to add, Brenda? Um, I, I just wanted to point out that, that overall, I believe this budget is decreased from last year, probably not a lot, but it's pretty close. There weren't, uh, th there wasn't as much in retained earnings to be able to apply towards this budget as there have been in past years. So it ended up being, um, the result was a little higher um, assessment to each of the towns, but overall the budget is is in in line with where I think it should be. I, I don't know, Zach. Unless Zach has something else he'd like to add, and I think the 
you know, the labor line is is more this year because they're really looking. They were bringing on some more full time, two full time, full time paramedics, like paramedics um, to replace some of the per diem. Yeah. On, uh, you know, but the, they did decrease. We should ask Zach that question. Exactly. They decreased the overtime and per diem. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Which we've been looking to see. Yep. Early estimates show that the revenues would probably be higher than what we're projecting on this budget. Yes. Because of what um, actually the first quarter of this year has, has shown since we kind of get out of COVID that the things are changing a little bit. Right. People were afraid to call an ambulance. They didn't, you know, with COVID, there was a lot of people that didn't call an ambulance that, that would have in years past. So the revenues and the, that the billing that you would typically see wasn't there last year towards the end of last year so there that's kind of changing and kind of getting back to a normal or even above normal right is what you're saying so yep okay so that's part of the 13 article 13 so this is says fiscal year 2022 capital projects the select board intends to request that this article article be passed over. And one of the reasons was at the time that we put the article together, we weren't clear on a couple of details related to the American Rescue Plan Act, which is, as many of you have heard us affectionately refer to it, ARPA. And ARPA, as Julie mentioned earlier, is a one-time source of funding. It was released by the federal government to assist with COVID-19 recovery. And the Select Board, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, and Finance Committee all got together and discussed ad nauseum how the large group of capital projects that we had would be paid for. And in some cases, it was very difficult to sort of parse this list. So I appreciate Julie making, making the, the point that regardless of how our projects are paid for, if we're using one-time funds, it means that we still next year may run into the same log mm -hmm. jam of how to pay for some of the capital expenses that we need to fund. So let me just tell you that during those discussions amongst the three committees, five capital projects, which were presented during this budget development process, so FY23, were or will be funded using ARPA grant funds after those conversations. So the largest project we're looking at is the Leary, we call it the Leary lot. It's the municipal parking lot between Cheslick's Market and Greenfield Savings Bank down here in South Deerfield. And the estimated amount for the project that has been set aside or contemplated for development of that lot for economic accessibility in the village is $500,000. The next project is a project that we were not able to fund through the FY22-23 process, um, except using ARPA funds. And it's an operational need, and it's for design and construction of a new HVAC system for the police department at $100,000. Then we have another operational need for replacement of outdated software to run the highway building's HVAC system, and that's $10,000. Again, you're looking at an operational need. And in some way, in some places where you see this explanation, it reflects a conversation that Capital had about setting priorities that they worked with finance and the select board to really refine. So in some cases you're seeing economic development, in other cases you're seeing operational needs. Another one was the highway mini excavator purchase of $100,000. That's an operational need that will help us in two ways. It will help us to install sidewalks and it will also help us to clean and maintain culverts. And those are two very important pieces of not only accessibility in the village, but also for safety and just making sure that our infrastructure is keeping up with what it's being, what, what it faces in terms of moving water and moving people. The last item is senior center repairs, and it's repairs to prevent further damage to the building at a co estimated cost of $35,000. And this was discussed on multiple occasions. Really, we've identified some needs that have come up in the past several weeks that we should be able to, that we, sh that we need to handle to preserve 
a different or further use of that building. So the total project request coming through ARPA is $745,000. And this represents the first tranche of ARPA funding. The town will receive a second allocation in the second installment, which will give us a grand total of approximately $1.4 million. Can I speak to this a little bit? So, um, so ARPA was, you know, ARPA was given to the to the town and um, under the under the direction of the select board to to spend, and we, um, you know, we struggled a bit on how we were going to work on um, to do with it. Because the the requirements and the law about the about ARPA had been changing and. Um, we've been waiting and waiting to figure out what the final law was going to be. That final rule was written and adopted April 1st. And what it, during this time, we've been thinking, well, we wanted to, because of the serious cost that it takes to implement and maintain and write and report grants, um, we were really going to look for one project to spend it on so that we didn't have um, all this grant writing and reporting requirements that were just adding a lot of extra work to the staff here. So we had thought hard, long and hard about um, one project that we could do. Well, when the, when the new um, rule was finally um, put out, they allowed us to take, and we hope to vote tonight a little later on, to, um, to claim this money coming in as a revenue loss so that we could then spend then the, the select board ha would have the ability to spend it on any legitimate government use. Um, so instead of having to put it towards one item, you could you could spend it on one-time things that met and uh, fell into the needs um, of the ARPA uh, rules. And when we looked at the capital projects, we also felt we wanted to really make sure that this grant money touched as many people as possible um, so that, you know, it was broadly spent and we felt like we had this one-time ability to take care of some of the capital projects that we all want to do. The, the most important one that the select board has been talking about is making economic development in town and improving the space downtown. And that is our Leary lot or the municipal parking lot. And we're working with different entities there and the property owners to try and develop a nice parking lot so that people can park and spend money and walk around and go to restaurants and sit and have a picnic and um, will enhance uh, parking for businesses downtown. So that's that's our envision and we, we want to use that and we're looking at what you know what that's going to cost. We still don't have an actual final budget on that, but we do have some ideas what the whole thing might run. So we felt like that was a really important thing that would would benefit a lot of the people in town. And then we could we could tick off a few of these other capital issues that would also help people and um, and and lift that need off that off the capital that we didn't we didn't figure out we couldn't figure out any other way to to do this year. So and yes, it'll be harder next year and the year after to do this capital stuff, but we felt like this wasn't spending money on a reoccurring salaried kind of thing um, because we can't afford to continue that. You got to spend it on a one-time thing. So that's kind of where we're at with that. And we'll look at the second project next year when we get the tranche of money. So that's Article it. Article 14, and this is fiscal year 2023 capital projects. And so after just sort of coming down to the, the point where there were decisions about what was funded through ARPA, um, everybody recalibrated the focus and evaluated the other capital projects that were placed through, or that went through the capital process and came up with the capital projects you see in this table. And that is three, four elementary school requests, a request from the public works department and a request in the transfer station. So we had ongoing projects to replace flooring at $22,200 for the elementary school. Also ongoing restroom reno renovations at 15,500. The elementary school air conditioning for the skills and music room at 16,000. And a commercial dishwasher replacement for the elementary school at $30,000.
then we have we need to replace our brushwood chipper. It has some safety issues. So $59,000 is the estimated cost for that. And we need to replace the shed at the transfer station. And after some discussion, the allocation of $10,000 was decided upon. So the total capital requests are $152,700 through free cash. Yep. Article 15. This is another article that the town and that the select board will be prepared to pass over. So this was initially considered because at first we didn't, we weren't sure how much we were going to need in terms of funds to make changes and develop a better working space in the congregational church as was discussed last fall to provide senior services in the addition of the church. So the select board began working with Deerfield Academy to consider repairs and upgrades for so that that space can be used for senior services. But there will be some costs to the town. We'll have to have, we may have possible asbestos removal. We may have to dispose of outdated kitchen equipment and other things. But at a recent evaluation of the building, it was indicated that there are some repairs to the, the structure itself, the mm -hmm. roof trusses and the steeple. So after much discussion, um, all three groups considered that it probably is better to leave those funds where they are mm -hmm. to be used for the purpose of repairs to the church. Article, oops, sorry, Article 16. This is a separate frontier regional school request for capital repairs. It's to, I just had a, I just literally have my mind playing. This is the, the, this the is cooler, right? the walking cooler. cooler. Walk cooler. cooler. Yep. Thank yep. you. I will you write that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just, it literally just mm. flew out yep. of my head. So this is Deerfield share to replace the walking cooler with the frontier regional school. And the amount requested is $36,727.47. Yep. I will add a note about that. <laughs> or I could just ask various. Yeah. Article 17. This is the community preservation fund vote. And there were several project applications that went to CPC, Community Preservation Committee. And what you see here is a chart that represents what they plan to put forward in their motions for these projects that were requested. So the first one is the old grammar school rehabilitation phase one. I made that change. And it's in the amount of $475,000. And thanks to Julie, we were able to get that. She really did that application on behalf of the select board and we appreciate that. And that's just for everybody to know, that's for engineering and like a study to kind of figure out Feasibility, feasibility to right. utilize the old grammar school possibly for use as a town hall right with improved spaces storage and meeting areas um, but again that's the feasibility go ahead. piece go ahead. it's not just a feasibility study though right it's a feasibility study plus some concrete like Plan. actual work it, it's towards design planning, right? thank you yeah, yeah that's design, what I'm saying. Drawings, yeah. And drawings yeah. yes testing survey right okay. right it's OPM. it's pretty yeah. pretty serious and yeah. have budgetary numbers right as yeah. well for what the construction concrete would be. concrete numbers well thanks George. as concrete as it can be these days <laughs> <laughs> at 34 percent was made in connecticut so it's almost <laughs> oh, a little bit yes and the second one is this contribution for APR to put a parcel of land into APR. Mm -hmm. And that's map 149, lot six. The contribution requested from the state is 5% of the total payment for the APR that the, that the state would make at $11,000. Yep. The ad hoc town common committee requested town common rehabilitation and restoration funds in the amount of $350,000 to do the rehab on the common here in South Deerfield. Do you want to speak to that? Just, we've been working, uh, the ad hoc committee have been working, started by Jane, the late Jane Trujer, maybe four or five years ago now, and we've been working on plans and uh, we'll work with Berkshire Design to come up with uh, some plans to kind of redo the crosswalk so it's safer access to the common and away from the common, and then safer um, walkways um, on the common that are ADA compliant and new benches, place to sit, and then, uh, rehabilitating the, the fountain area and try to um, turn that into be kind of recycled water so it's not wasting 
I don't know, I think it's 15 swimming pools a, d a day going through that thing. So there's a lot of water that goes through that yeah, daily. Yeah, you got to be careful with that one. Yes, we do. We do have to be careful with it. But. Well, only because originally the fountain was put in to keep the water moving in within the system. Yep. And if you shut that down, it can cause other issues well, with the water district. The water commissioners have been asking us to do it. Yeah. So I think we should, we're trying to flush that out a bit. The other yeah. issue is, I love seeing a large ice sculpture there every winter, but that would be something that we wouldn't see. Um, it's been off for the last few months. I'm trying to ask Kevin what's going on there for the last few weeks. I'm not sure why that is, but um, maybe they're shutting it off to clean it out or something That's like that. That's controlled by the water just one at a time. Oh, it is, yeah. it is, I wondered that. So I'm not sure what's happening there. So we'll have to check in, but the idea is to keep the historic cone and fountain um, and then to kind of make the, the fountain not as deep so it's not a safety hazard and then to redo the, the seating around it and some seating areas around it so we hold memorial day uh functions there and um i just remember faye bardlo just barely being able to walk on that uneven crosswalk you know walkways and they're really narrow and all bumpy and it just needs to be a better smoother place so we would have more um you know more seating areas and safer place and reconfigure a few of the the monuments so Pretty exciting. We have some plans that people can look at. Yeah, there's yeah. some pretty pictures for people. Yep. Yeah. Just for historical perspective, there used to be a fountain on Brotherbrook Corner where, near the monument oh, yeah? that did recycle. Really? And some residents at the time decided that it would really be cool to put fuel oil in there instead of water and watch the water, the fire come out of the fountain as well. Other was this fact, you? Huh? Was this you? This was not me. <laughs> this is way before me. <laughs> All the people are deceased now. That's the only reason I yeah, can talk about Because it. of um, the fire. <laughs> but then the not realizing that the fountain was made out of brass, it melted. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> they owned a fuel oil company. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So this there's two other projects. Yeah, you, you, it's a good thing. Yep. Names have been changed to protect the innocent, boost. right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two other projects here. There's the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee's request for funds toward a senior housing feasibility study. And I believe if I remember what Carolyn has said about this in the past, this would fund um, at least in part the information they would need to take to a bank right. to request to move forward with a loan process. Right. Yep. And then PVMA would like to preserve 18th and 19th century account books of two different families right. in the north end of town. So you have a you also have two revenue appropriations, and that's a transfer to reserve for community housing at yep. 13000 and the appropriation for community preservation administrative expenses of $15,000. Okay. And then we did, so you do not see this table in the warrant because at the time we were finalizing the warrant, all of this information had to be distilled out. Yep. And I simply didn't have time to do it. So I apologize to the residents, but we did make sure that we put in the preservation, community preservation reserve balances mm -hmm. so that when people go to town meeting, they know what's available as of June 30th, Common which is question. the last official date, correct? Yep. Yes. It is a common question and it was, it's a really useful piece of information. So thank you, Brenda, for providing it. And for, you know, she's written a lot of other things for me just so everybody knows. Um, article 18. Can I make two comments on the CPA funds? Sure. I'm sorry. One, I have two comments on the CPA funds. One is everybody ask about the park and that park funding is not in this balance that has already been pulled out. Correct. Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, it's already That's been out. That's why it's zeroed out, yep. And the other comment, which I think everybody knows, but I'm going to say it anyway, is that CPA funds can only be used for these purposes, open space, historic resources, and community housing. Yep. It's a tax we've already voted on ourselves that we are going to pay regardless. So we should use this money, in my opinion, to better the town. Absolutely. We can't use this funding for... Paving. Paving or the walk-in cooler or right. any of that stuff. There's only certain things that it can be used for. So I think this is a wise use of the funds to help the town move forward. Yep. And can I just clarify, it's a surcharge that's, that's um, 
applied to the tax that you pay, not, it's not an additional tax, it's but a it, surcharge. Okay. Yeah. But, but it, what it also does is, and, and last year we got a 100% match from the state. We did. So, I mean, and that's, that's really, you know, when, when people have asked before, hey, can we reduce this or not do it? But if you look at anywhere in the world where you're going to get a return on your money, this is like the smartest return on your money. It's a, it's a good chunk of cash coming to the town from the state right. for just because we put money aside. Right. So these balances are as of June 30 of 2021. As Casey mentioned, that's the official balance at that point in time. The 100% match that you're talking about came in in November at 252,000. Oh, so very that's, nice. So that's not, so reflected, that's not reflected here, here yet. yet. Right. So, so the balances at the end of 2022 will even be higher. Right. And that will include the allocations that were made at the town meeting last year that yep. would have taken, taken effect on July 1. So for instance, the reserve for community housing shows here at 350,000, but we had voted to allocate another 209,000 to that. That right. will show up in next year's balance. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we go a little ways behind. Right. Yep. Okay. And because we're looking at preserving the original grant, well, not the original grammar school, the, the grammar school, school. <laughs> on the corner. Uh, that's why that is eligible for the CPA right. funds and projections are that we're going to be able to use primarily CPA funds for that whole project. So um, we'll be able to do that with having, without having a significant in, uh, impact on the taxes within the town. That's good. So Article 18 also relates to community preservation and Tim Hilchey is going to move both of these articles just so you know. Yep, perfect. Um, 18 is a request to extend the grant period time frame for the Indian House and Bloody Brook Tavern Rehabilitation and Restoration Project. This was voted back in 2019, I believe. Mm -hmm. But with COVID, interruptions happened for, at Mass Historical Commission. So they hadn't finished their final review of the project this request would allow them time to do that to do that final evaluation and report back so we're trying to assist to make sure that yeah. there's an adequate time to do that makes sense article 19 this is a request to the town to take the proceeds from the sale of real property and pay the note that the town took out to purchase it. And this is, we're talking about the Oxford land. We always mm -hmm. talk about, we call it the Oxford land. It's the former Pickle land property, which is now off of Merrigan Way. Um, the select board went through a procurement process, which is what's required to sell this piece of land again, and signed a purchase and sale agreement. However, the sale is not final. There's some final work that the prospective owner wants to and needs to complete. So once the sale is finalized, though, if the town approves this article, it would allow us to pay the loan off right. Just get it and, paid. And, and satisfy that requirement without having to go back to town meeting and asking for permission to reallocate the funds. Yep. We're trying to prepare for it. Yeah. Article 20. This is a request. And this is a little complicated, but I'll try to make it short. This is a request for the town to consider approval to allow the select board to put a home rule petition forward for the legislature to vote to separate the current position of town clerk treasurer collector into two separate positions of town clerk and of town treasurer collector. So the position was originally created in 1972 through a town meeting and special act of the legislature and it combined three part time elected positions into one job. And this was done by many communities at the time. In 2002, the town requested another special act to change the, to change the position from an elected one to an appointed one. So Deerfield is now one of only two communities in the Commonwealth in which this position still exists. And the skill sets to perform all the duties of all three positions are pretty specialized at this point. It's changed over the years. So, 
Deerfield's been very lucky. The former town clerk, treasure collector who resigned in January, she was trained into the position. And, but with only one other municipality having a position of this nature, it's going to be difficult to hire to fill that position to cover all three disciplines. So the discipline of the town clerk, the treasurer and the collector. So I wanna make it clear that current staff will not lose their jobs because there's two support positions mm -hmm. that work with the town clerk treasurer collector. Um, if this request is successful, we would add a part-time town clerk to perform those duties and continue to have a full-time treasurer collector. Now town clerk duties, they include elections, vital statistics, record keeping, and really that's increased quite a bit. The rules around how things are done and the You're amount of work has increased substantially based on changes that have made, been made legislatively mostly. Um, plus you have these complex methods of voting. I mean, we have, we have so many different ways to vote. And a lot of that came, I shouldn't say a lot, but some of it came out of COVID and the response to COVID. So we also have the financial functions that include collections and treasury. So collections is a much more intricate job than it was 40 years ago. It includes taking in taxes and other funds and then turning them over to the treasurer to deposit, invest, and disperse because the treasurer functionally pays all the bills. So that has also changed as well. It, it, they're, they're more complicated. The treasurer duties especially relate to investment of trust funds and other types of funds that the town maintains. So there's a, there's a different level of, of, of complexity that we really wanna be able to capture as we try to hire for a position. So the splits intended to increase capacity for both positions while maintaining current staff support and realizing some efficiency and effectiveness as we perform those clerk functions and financial functions. What did I miss? Anything? No, I think, I think you've covered it. Did a good job. Yeah, I don't know. So Article 21, this relates to speed limits and the purpose is to see if the town will approve the provisions of the gen related general law, chapter 90, section 17C, that would allow the select board to set speed limits of 25 miles per hour in all areas of town defined as thickly settled or business district. So in the past, if you wanted to change a speed limit to lower it, you would have to do a speed study and take an average speed and then request approval of that. Now, average speeds can have changed quite a bit because you've, you've got many different types of vehicles that are quieter, foot. more efficient, and actually move at a higher speed without people realizing. And, and this, I actually asked the chief this question because I wasn't sure. Um, so if we did one of those speed studies, it might be higher than we expected. Mm -hmm. And John, if you want to jump in here, feel free. Um, if, you, if they did accept the general law reference, then the town could make those changes, the select board could make those changes without entering into a complex process. And I think it would satisfy some of the concerns that people have in the various areas of town about speeding. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I will tell you anecdotally that Harry Ruddick, who formerly is a, mem a full-time member of the police staff and is now um, retired, he's he been very, it, he, he's been very instrumental in acquiring the speed monitoring signs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there is They've a sign great. on Sugarloaf Street that I now see every day when I come to work. And there's DevOps to be the administrative <laughs> assistant. And I have a joke because it really in, helps you slow down yeah. if you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't, we get that. Right. But we have this joke that we always see Harry's face when it's a frowny face <laughs> because it reminds us to just monitor how we're driving. Yeah. And if we could make changes to our speed limits with a less in complex process, I think residents would appreciate that. And this actually came, this came directly from the police chief after conversations with residents. Yep, it is a very common request. Mm -hmm. um, article 22, this is the third article that the select board would prefer to have the passed over. Um, there's been discussion about making changes to the sewer bylaw for many years. And at the close of the town meeting warrant, which was in March, um, draft changes were more substantial than 
the select board anticipated. So we may be seeing at least four articles coming forward at um, upcoming town meetings. The yep. board's going to work on this and take some time to really delve into it. Yeah. Um, Article 23 is a citizen's petition, and this is for a resolution in support of changing the state flag and seal of Massachusetts. Um, I do believe there's a member, uh, there's a resident that will be speaking to this okay. um, and is working with um, Dan Grace to develop uh, what that presentation or what those talking points might be. Great. Right. I'll cool. stop sharing and shut up now. Any questions from the public or anyone online? Any questions about? John abandoned me. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> So you asked and he was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. She's got this. Yes. I don't see anybody. Nobody's raising their hand. Nobody's raising their hand. Okay, good. I hope it's explanatory. Yeah, I think that was, that was I'll good. I'll tighten up some of those talking points yeah. after listening Make to Julie. And Julie, I may reach out to you for a couple of details, if you wouldn't mind, about a couple of things that you may comment on that I'd like you to Okay. Right. So I appreciate you both being here to help me because sometimes it, if it's only in my brain, I don't always catch the nuances. So I appreciate the comments that everybody's had. Sure. All righty. Please um, come Monday. Monday, seven o'clock. Frontier. More, more public than this, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It'll be in, in the auditorium. Yep. Yes. Cool. It won't be in a football field or baseball yes. field yeah. or. So wear a mask if you need to, and please show up. And we yeah. hope that you come. I will say that Jennifer Gannett and Jennifer Wallace have been working closely. Yes, thank you very um, much. To develop the the sort of strategic plan to yep. place everyone. And, and I it's think they're hard. doing a great job of it, trying to anticipate everything. And it's hard because you can't fit everybody inside right. there. At, like you can outside, the tables can go forever, but in there you're a little more limited. So. Right. Placing your tables, providing yep. additional information, that's a little yep. more you know, strategic. So yeah. they're working through that. Which reminds me, Trevor, get me the pictures, please. Yes, I'm going to work on that yes. for sure. I'll you get need you. to get her I've pictures got, so I've she can get I've got the thing in my pocket to do that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. Um, okay, um, so entertain a motion for the uh, webinar replacement. Yes, so um, I, get, I don't have motion language but i guess my language is there a specific language we need to say would you like me to read this no i, I got it here i so, would start from the so you're considering voting to choose the revenue replacement option right for all funds received through the american rescue plan act of up to the standard allowance and this was referenced in a training session that we went to right. carolyn and i went to a couple weekends ago yep and the standard of allowance is allowed in the final rule, and it would be to put put those funds toward government services beginning April 1st, 2022, as established through the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. So I'm going to repeat that in a motion. <laughs> so uh, make a motion to vote to choose uh, the revenue replacement option for all funds received from the American Rescue Plan Act of up to the standard allowance as followed in the as allowed in the final rule to be put towards government services beginning April 1st, 2022, established through the coronavirus uh, state and local fiscal recovery funds. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carry. Do we, do we write 200 when somebody's absent? Yes. Okay. Just wondered about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would normally take some of these notes, but I was busy preparing yep. both talking Fine. points and the motions Fine. and stuff. So I, I have to say, I, I usually have a few more notes than right now. Bear so with. we did the contracts. We don't have any appointments or resignations. No. Uh, we have no other permits. We have a couple of items unanticipated. Okay. Ember Gardens, BCA, yes. and you don't have the letter yet. Do we need to do that right away for the so general the, part thing? So the testimony letter needs to go out when we send out, and, and let me share with the public. Um, if town meeting approves the split of, of the, the positions, positions, the yep. three positions, um, I discussed it at length with Natalie Blaze, legislative aide. She would be putting forward this legislation to this in the state house. 
And it would be really helpful if we had some testimony letters to identify why we need this. Okay. And our two staff members, Sarah Kimball and Jen Wallace, have graciously taken the time to write down what it would mean to them. Okay, good. Um, I think it would be helpful if the board could send a letter as well. Yep. I was working in dual Can on I dual documents today, so I wasn't able to develop it. But many of the talking points that I went over earlier apply to this. Right. Can I make a motion to have the chair sign, or does it need to be? Uh, or could, do I just didn't know if we all needed to sign, or, or would it be you better could. if we all do? It's better if you all oh, sign. Oh, okay, it. then we'll all um, sign. But... And if maybe I would hope to be able to get it ready for you for Monday, so you okay. can sign it. Okay, that'd be the... great. That's fine. So we'll do that. I'll make a motion to sign the. Uh, anticipation of signing the uh, select board testimony letter to the general court in support of the town clerk treasurer collector position split. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Very good. Um, I also will make a motion to approve the Amber Gardens um, host community agreement for signature. I read through that and it looks like um, I understand the changes that are here. Yes. Um, I don't really have any concerns with it at all. Yep. We walked we walked this through with council yep. on both sides. Right. And, and there we was, knew this was coming. So. There was we did know this was coming. You talked about it a few weeks ago. Um, and we had discussed this at length prior to the discussion a couple of weeks ago. And there was a couple questions that uh, Ember Gardens Council had, and they weren't able to get a get each there's several people involved in this and they yeah. got some very last minute requests for information in terms of changes so council like an address change there was yes um, there's an address change there's a removal of a reference to wastewater because there yep. isn't wastewater at that site exactly um, I mean, and there was a question about the us uh, an item in the termination section right so where it would just stay the same if we don't if we can't um in in the fifth year if we can't settle on a new contract this contract stays in force stays until in we do right yep. that's good. so that's those are so, the substantial changes and you the, had this is this is very similar to the last contract you did except it it does connect marijuana cultivation with manufacture good and this was discussed at both here at both meetings where you met with ember gardens yep okay so um are we sticking with the september 2021 date no, we'll change Post. the date. Okay. We'll change the date. <laughs> no, we'll change the date. Okay. Um, Appreciate but I, I did want you to know that we were, we had been working on this for quite a while. Okay. Yeah, in anticipation. Okay. okay. So right. um, I'll second uh, motion. Trevor's motion. All right. Any further discussion? Nope. And then we'll just come in and sign with the yes. it. Okay. Great. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. I think that is. We had a couple of mail items. One was from Pam Am and one was. Just saw they were going to start doing the uh, herbicide spraying. Yes. And there's also an email from Beth Janini at the COG. And we. Yes, in I saw that. Mail. Yep. Um, the regional planning reason. agencies are seeking you know some some information on towns about the details of the new bipartisan infrastructure bill which is that tranche of money that's coming to yeah. the feds and state i'd rather at my sewer department than at my bus stop just to say so they sent Go a survey out yep. i think i forwarded it to you but you guys can slap me on the back of the head and i'll re well, it because the there's link. a survey link that you could take okay. to really give some input individually it's hard that? for me to do this Unless no, you want me to you, try to do it now. No, can you um, forward it? Yeah, that'd be great. I I'll just I'll fill now. that out and tell them where I, the money yeah, should please. go. Good, great. We also got a, a thank you card. I, I thought Carolyn was at this meeting, so I just put it over there. So it's nice. I got yeah. a chance to read that. It was a nice thank you card from the um, the Sunderland um, Energy Committee, mm -hmm. and they thanked um, the select board and and all staff for. Um, putting together the um, climate summit that we had the other weekend. Oh, how nice. It was very, very nice. Yeah, they really enjoyed it. And um, so it's nice to get a card about that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. that was good. 
Very nice when you send thank you cards. Yes. Thank you for a nice tea. My Casey forgets. I forget birthdays too. Just I know. I love her stuff. The show is better. I am that. the worst birthday person in my family. I will remind you. Thank you. She does. <laughs> Okay. So um, I think that's the majority of it. I really wanted to see that. that it's a birthday. I always thought it was the first month, according to my wife. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, spread snow. How, how come nobody's... Thank you, Brenda. Have a good night. Thanks for all your help. Husband. So I have a birthday. She has a birth month. I hope I figured <laughs> that out. Well, I will make a motion to adjourn. Um, Holy cow. Can I have a second? We'll wait for a second. Uh, listen to our common administrator. Oh, I thought she didn't have anything today. She's been working on. All I've done is pretty much. Yeah, I didn't. Think <laughs> I should say all I've yeah, done. Yeah, thank you. We got a second. We're done. We're out. Have a good night. All <laughs> oh, in favor. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfman. <laughs>